Thank you for joining us to learn more about sororities at Tulane. We hope you can understand why we waited to record this tutorial until we knew details about the delayed start to the spring semester, and we appreciate your patience with the timing of the university's winter break closure. This tutorial is being recorded on Wednesday, January 5th, and the information is up to date as of today. My name is Liz Schaefer, and I serve as the Director of Fraternity and Sorority Programs. I'm proud to work with the 40% of full-time undergraduate students here who belong to one of our 23 Greek letter social organizations. Our department is part of the Division of Student Affairs, and our staff is dedicated to providing an exceptional fraternity and sorority experience to our students. To name just a few of the things we do, we provide training to chapter and council officers on issues of organizational management and leadership development, work with national fraternity and sorority staff and local volunteers to support chapters, give guidance on program and event planning, and collaborate with various campus departments to provide resources and programming on topics such as violence prevention, health and wellness, recreation, and academic support. In this tutorial, we will answer the questions we most commonly hear from parents of students who are considering joining a sorority. Of course, if after viewing the tutorial you still have questions, please don't hesitate to contact our staff. Tulane has 14 sororities, each of which is affiliated with a national sorority. The university affiliate groups are called chapters, so you will hear us and your students refer to either their sorority or their chapter. All of these groups are grounded in values centered on sisterhood, scholarship, leadership, and service. It's important to note that these are all private organizations that have individual criteria for membership. The university does not have control over these criteria or how the chapters apply them. Each sorority chapter at Tulane belongs to a student-run staff-advised governing council. The councils are made up of chapters that are similar in size and do similar activities. You can see on your screen the names of each of our sororities and the councils to which they belong. We have two multicultural sororities, both of which are inactive right now because of the pandemic. Both belong to our Multicultural Greek Council, or MGC, and we hope to work with their national organizations in the coming months to assist them with reestablishing. We have three historically Black sororities, which average six members in size and are part of our National Panhellenic Council, or NPHC. Two of these have joint charters with nearby Loyola University, meaning they have members from both schools. And finally, nine sororities belong to our Panhellenic Council, also known as Panhell. These groups currently average in size at 200. Eight of these sororities have houses, which are owned and managed by either local alumni of the sorority or by the individual sorority's National Housing Corporation. Our ninth and newest sorority, Tri-Delta, will move into their house next academic year. While only a few women live in these houses, the so-called brothel law you may have heard of is just an urban legend. Most of the houses were built as single family homes and later converted to use by the sororities. So those that do have a live-in component only house between three and eight women. The only time a member may be required to live in the sorority house is if she eventually serves in a particular chapter office, such as president or treasurer, and living in a sorority house does not exempt a student from the two-year requirement to live on campus. The sororities primarily use the houses as meeting spaces and a home away from home for their members. Many parents work, wonder about the time commitment that joining a sorority will bring. Like so many things in life, your daughter will get out of the sorority what she puts into it. If she chooses to get involved with committees and events early on, she will spend a bit more time. But on average, most new members should expect to spend five to 10 hours per week attending new member education sessions to learn about the organization's history, after business meetings and sisterhood or social events. If your daughter is already involved in one or more other student organizations, her new sorority will view that as a benefit, not a hindrance. We require each sorority to submit to us a detailed plan for their new member education and orientation program. Once we approve that plan, we require the organization's officers to send a copy of it to all new members. We encourage you to ask your daughter to send it to you so you will have a good idea of the chapter events and activities she will be attending. All our sororities consider academic achievement to be an essential part of membership. The average GPA of Greek members has been higher than that of non-Greek members for more than 15 years at Tulane. And the sororities compete fiercely with one another for the highest grades. You can view the GPA standings for each organization on our website, greek.tulane.edu, under the About Our Community heading. The costs of sorority membership are listed on your screen. They vary somewhat by council, and the variance is based on a number of factors, including the size of the group, 
the number and type of activities they plan each year, and whether or not they have a house or sometimes provide meals for members. Regardless, it's important to note that the first semester of membership is more expensive because of one-time new member fees. Your daughter will also pay a Greek membership fee to the university each semester. If she joins a Panhellenic Council organization, that fee will be included in the dues she pays to her sorority. But if she joins an NPHC or multicultural sorority, her accounts receivable will be charged. The fee covers things in three basic categories, educational programming for members, social and community programming, and neighborhood relations. There are also limited scholarship opportunities available to assist with covering dues, both from the Greek governing councils and from some of the national organizations. As you are probably aware, the university sets and maintains eligibility requirements of students who wish to join a fraternity or sorority. The requirements are straightforward and are listed on your screen. A couple of important notes though. First is that we hold hard and fast to the minimum requirements and do not make exceptions to them. That means that if your daughter earns a 2.499 GPA, which is not a 2.5, she will not be able to participate. But it also means that if she completes only 10 hours in the first semester, but Tulane has accepted three advanced placement credits, she will be able to participate. We take a hard line on the requirements because all our sororities have those same minimums. If we make an exception and allow a student to participate in Panhellenic recruitment, even though her GPA doesn't meet the minimum, none of the sororities will be allowed by their national organizations to invite her to membership. So that means we don't make exceptions under any circumstances. Secondly, all potential new members must complete educational requirements before they begin the recruitment or intake process. This educational programming is all completed remotely. All first year students, as well as upper division women who have indicated an interest in joining a sorority have been receiving monthly emails about the education requirements. If your student has questions about those requirements, please encourage her to contact our student assistance at greek at tulane.edu for more information about how to complete them. MGC and NPHC sororities bring in new members through a process called membership intake. Typically in late January or early February, the organizations will each host a week of activities as well as an informational meeting to help prospective members learn about the programs and events they do. Following the informational, they will accept membership applications and vote on which applicants to invite to membership. Generally, MGC organizations do not require applicants to obtain recommendation letters from graduate or alumni members, but NPHC organizations do require them. Now we're going to spend some time talking about the recruitment process used by our Panhellenic Council, as it's the largest and most complex. Any academic issues that are preventing a student from being eligible for recruitment must be resolved by Friday, January 7th. Examples of these issues are incomplete grades from the first semester, an appeal to a professor for a higher grade, or incoming transfer credit. If your student has a concern about a grade, she should contact her professor as soon as possible, understanding that professors are still on winter break and may not respond to calls or emails immediately. On Tuesday, January 18th at 10 a.m., the residence halls will open for women participating in recruitment. We ask that students respect this opening time as our colleagues in Housing and Residence Life graciously agreed to partner with us and open the halls early. Recruitment registrants will be billed $40 to move back into their rooms early. These fees will be billed to your daughter's accounts receivable and are non-refundable, even if she withdraws or is released from recruitment. That evening at 8 p.m., the potential new members who we call PNMs will attend our recruitment orientation called kickoff. After PNM eligibility is finalized, we will assign all the PNMs to small groups, which will be led by peer recruitment counselors. PNMs can expect to receive their group assignment and the corresponding location for their kickoff session by January 12th. It's important for parents to understand the overall concepts of Panhellenic recruitment. The goal of the National Panhellenic Conference is to achieve parity among all organizations on a given campus. That goal of parity means we strive to finish the recruitment process with all chapters receiving the same number of new members. Recruitment is based on the idea that each of our nine sororities is a viable option for women who want to join. Your daughter should begin the process with an open mind about joining any of the organizations that invites her to membership, not with the idea that she won't have been successful if she's not invited by the one or two that she's heard the most about. As of today, 
Our plan is to host recruitment kickoff in person by recruitment counselor group, then hold the first two rounds of recruitment via Zoom, and then host the final two rounds and bid day in person. Of course, we may have to pivot and switch some in-person activities to a virtual format, but it's our sincere hope not to have to do so. Last year, we hosted the entire recruitment process virtually, and it worked amazingly well, so we're prepared no matter what the pandemic throws our way. However, we do recommend that PMs think through the logistical issues that will make them feel most comfortable and confident for any parts of the process that are held virtually. PMs who are roommates will very likely have recruitment events at the same time, so they may want to consider using noise canceling headphones so they don't distract each other. But they don't need to worry too much beyond that, as the sorority members they'll be meeting will be in the same situation. At the end of each day of recruitment, both the PNMs and the sororities rank their prefer preferences. The PNMs will use a recruitment management app to list the organizations they're most interested in returning to. At the same time, the sororities will vote and determine which PNMs they will invite back. In order to achieve that parity I talked about, sororities that have historically been listed as a top preference by PNMs are allowed to invite fewer women back to successive rounds. Our staff, with the assistance of a volunteer recruitment specialist from the National Panhellenic Conference, uses a computer system used nationwide to cross-reference the PNM's preferences with the sorority's invitations to produce an individual schedule for each PNM for each round. The schedule is listed on your screen. As you can see, during the first round, all PNMs visit all sororities, but for the successive rounds, they will visit fewer chapters. So the process works like a funnel with each PNM's options being narrowed down each day. If a chapter doesn't invite a PNM for a particular round, it means they are not interested in her joining their organization and she will not have the opportunity to join that group. She should instead focus on the groups that did invite her. The process works because PNMs must visit all sororities that they have been invited to on a particular day, even if they are ones she listed lower on her preference list. This gives the sororities more of a chance to convince the PNMs that they are a good option for her. The final round of recruitment is called preference, and it's the most serious. After PNMs attend preference events, during which the sororities will make their final emotional pitch to the PNMs to join, the PNMs will rank in preferential order the sororities they visited that night. They will do so using a binding agreement form that is used nationwide. Two very important notes about preference. First, national sorority policies dictate that the period immediately following preference events is called strict silence. PNMs may not talk to one another or to their peer counselors that night until after they have completed their binding agreement. They also may not talk to you until then. So if your daughter likes to talk things through with you before making a decision, we encourage you to spend some time talking with her about how she's feeling that morning, which will be Saturday, January 22nd, before she attends the events. The other important note is about that binding agreement. The agreement, which we explained thoroughly both during recruitment kickoff and on preference night, and which your daughter will click several times in the app to indicate her understanding, states that if she lists a sorority among her preferences and receives a membership invitation, also called a bid, to that sorority, she is bound to them until next January's recruitment. She doesn't have to join that sorority, but she may not join another Panhellenic sorority at Tulane for a year. Please note that bid day, the day when students learn which sorority they've been matched to, is a Sunday, meaning that university offices will be closed. If you have post-recruitment questions, our staff will be available to answer them beginning on Monday, January 24th. As your daughter goes through recruitment or considers intake, she will likely ask her advice about how to decide which organization she's most interested in. The most important factor in determining this is the fit she feels and her comfort level with the women in the group. And that's something she won't know until recruitment or the informationals happen. This can be tough if someone in your family is an alumna of one of our organizations, but we really encourage you to let your daughter make her own decision about which group is best for her, especially because chapters of the same organization can be very different on different campuses. And even our chapters here at Tulane change over the years. The next factor to consider plays into the first, and that is how much the organization's values resonate with your daughter. All national sororities were founded on a set of guiding principles, and the members should be able to articulate both the values themselves and how the chapter's activities reflect those values. 
Encourage your daughter to ask questions of the members that will help her determine the values that are important to each sorority. Finally, for those of you whose daughters are participating in Panhellenic recruitment, it's essential to understand that the process all colleges and universities across the country use is one of mutual selection. Mutual selection means that both the potential new member and the sorority must agree that the decision for her to join is mutually acceptable. Note that I didn't say that every PNM will get her first choice or even her eighth choice. Nor did I say every chapter gets to take all the PNMs they are most interested in. Instead, that means both parties are okay with the relationship. And that's often a hard distinction for your students to come to grips with. Many Tulane students are very used to being selected for things they want to do, whether that's a team, a performance, or a scholarship. So sometimes it's tough for a woman to deal with not getting invited back to her top choice sororities during recruitment. As I mentioned earlier, Sororities that have historically been listed as a top preference by many PMs are allowed to invite fewer women back to successive rounds. In recent years, that has meant that some of our sororities have only been allowed to invite back 40 or 50 percent of PMs after the first round, and then only 60 to 70 percent of those women in the following rounds. So we ask that you help your daughter manage her expectations about the process in advance talking with her over the next couple of weeks about what her goals for joining a sorority are, and about the fact that not being invited back to her perceived top choice will not negatively impact her time at Tulane. PMs tend to catastrophize when they aren't invited back to a chapter they have their heart set on. And while that's totally understandable as a reaction in the moment, I assure you that each year we have hundreds of students who deal with the disappointment of not being invited back by a group they want. We're very experienced in working with students who face disappointment during recruitment and helping them develop the resiliency it takes to move past that disappointment. While there are some women who don't complete the recruitment process, the vast majority of those continue after a disappointment, join a sorority, and are very happy with the chapter they have joined. A few general notes about Panhellenic recruitment. Tulane is not a campus that relies heavily on recommendations from alumni members. If a close friend or family member would like to submit a recommendation on your daughter's behalf, she should go to the website of her national sorority and find the standard form the organization suggests. If that form is to be mailed rather than submitted online, the addresses for all the chapters are available on our website. We talk a lot with PNMs about maximizing their options during recruitment. This means being polite during all recruitment events, even to women in chapters they aren't all that interested in, and keeping an open mind throughout the process. Though we can't guarantee that every student who participates in recruitment will receive a bid, I can tell you that those who don't get their hearts set on one particular chapter are far more likely to receive a bid. Finally, detailed information about the schedule for recruitment and suggestions about what your daughter might want to wear each day is available on our website. Please do not feel that you need to purchase any clothing for Panhellenic recruitment, though. While the overwhelming majority of students who want to join a sorority at Tulane are able to, sometimes it doesn't work out. The statistics from last year's Panhellenic recruitment are on your screen. A small percentage of those women who didn't complete recruitment were released from the process, meaning that at some point, none of the chapters decided to invite them back. But the majority voluntarily withdrew from the process, primarily because they were dissatisfied with the sorority options available to them as recruitment went on. Regardless, we want you to be aware of the resources that are available for all these women. Professional staff within our success coaching department coordinate follow-up with each of the PMs who leave the process. If necessary, they will refer students to additional support networks on campus, like our case management and counseling services departments. Additionally, we work with our colleagues in other student affairs departments to make sure other options for campus involvement are available shortly after recruitment. The Spring Activities Expo is tentatively scheduled for early February, and attending it is a great way to learn about other student organizations on campus that can fill the void if your daughter is having a hard time watching her floor mates participate in sorority activities. And finally, it's important to know that not all Tulane students join sororities in the spring of their first year. If your daughter is ineligible to participate this year, or if she withdraws or is released, she can certainly go through recruitment next spring. Shifting gears a bit, I wanna talk a little about alcohol. You've undoubtedly seen the recent news stories about the tragic deaths of fraternity members over the last few years. While all those stories were about men, it's important to note that women are not isolated from the issues related to alcohol. 
Many of the most serious issues facing college women, from crime to sexual assault to hazing, are in some way related to alcohol. You may also be aware that Tulane President Mike Fitz has in recent years called for the university community to change the campus's culture around alcohol use. We are fortunate that several years ago, our VP for Student Affairs convened a steering committee comprised of Tulane board members, senior administrators, faculty, staff, and alumni chapter advisors to create a long range plan for Greek life here. That committee recently shifted its work to focus on ways the Greek community can lead the way in changing that alcohol culture. Concurrently, our student leaders have been working with us to make improvements from the inside. Their efforts have resulted in improvements to our potential new member education series and in new initiatives to limit overconsumption of alcohol at fraternity and sorority parties. They no longer allow first year students to attend events with alcohol at their chapter houses for the first four weeks of the fall semester. Most exciting is a program started last year called the Greek Ambassadors. Approximately 45 students who are members of fraternities and sororities serve as ambassadors, and they are peer educators on topics primarily related to health and safety. These students facilitated the small group conversations that were part of our potential new member education series, and beginning in the spring, they will also offer fraternity and sorority chapters programs about alcohol and other drugs, sexual violence prevention, and other health and safety topics. For those of you whose students will join the Greek community, we want to spend some time talking about hazing prevention. The university's definition of hazing is on your screen. Students joining sororities should understand that their organizations can be held responsible for violating the hazing policy, even if the new members willingly participate in an activity that the university deems inappropriate. Experts have identified three general categories of hazing. The first is subtle hazing. This includes making new members perform tasks that older members don't have to perform. For example, cleaning up after a meal at the chapter house. Subtle hazing can also include things like making new members earn the right to wear organization insignia. Next is harassment hazing. This may include assigning new members to perform pranks or to wear silly clothing. The final type of hazing is violent hazing. This type includes some of the sensational acts you may hear about in media reports kidnapping new members, physical abuse, paddling, and forced alcohol consumption. At Tulane, hazing among our sorority women is less common than it is among our fraternity men. However, when it does occur, subtle hazing and harassment hazing are the most common forms. Pressure to consume alcohol is more common than actual forced drinking, but it is an issue nonetheless. One thing we try to drill into the minds of our students is that there is a very slippery slope involved if they engage in so-called lower order hazing. They often don't know the physical and mental health histories of their new members. For example, pressure drinking can cause serious issues for a new member with a history of depression and anxiety. Another issue is that within an organization, different people can have very different views of what constitutes hazing. What seems harmless to some people can seem completely inappropriate and dangerous to others. Last year, the Tulane Police Department and our Student Conduct Office investigated hazing allegations against three sororities. The allegations involving one sorority were deemed to be unwarranted, while Kappa Alpha Theta and Sigma Delta Tau sororities were found not responsible for any violations of the Code of Student Conduct. However, our staff conducted educational interventions with the leadership of each of these sororities to ensure the safety of their new member programming moving forward. It is important for parents to know that individual students may be held accountable through the conduct process for their actions in cases like these, even when organizations as a whole are not found responsible. We also want to highlight some state laws addressing hazing that were recently enacted by the Louisiana legislature. In response to the 2017 tragic hazing related death of Max Groover, an LSU fraternity member, the legislature adopted new statutes during their spring 2018 session. They further amended and strengthened those laws in 2019. One of those criminalized hazing, moving it from a misdemeanor to a felony with much more serious penalties than existed before. Another updated the definition of hazing and now requires higher education institutions to provide hazing prevention education to all their students. A third new statute creates an obligation to report hazing and to offer reasonable assistance, including seeking medical assistance to someone who has suffered serious bodily injury caused by reckless behavior, including hazing. If at any point during your daughter's time in 
a sorority, you have questions about whether she or a friend in another organization is being hazed. There are several resources you can consult. Of course, you can always call and speak to a member of our staff. And frankly, that is often the best method as it allows us the opportunity to ask clarifying questions about what's happening and to decide how best to address the situation. If you're uncomfortable doing that, you may file an online report at our website, tulane.edu slash concerns, or leave a message on our hazing hotline at 504-862-3111. If you make a report or call to ask a question, you can ask that we keep your identity confidential, and we will do so to the extent the law, to the, extent the law allows us. But I implore you to give us your contact information so we can follow up with any clarifying questions we have. As a parent myself, nothing is more frustrating and concerning to me than receiving a report that something potentially dangerous is happening, but not having enough information to stop it. If nothing else, please give us as much detail as possible when su submitting an anonymous report. What, when, where, and to whom something is happening or has happened. So we have specifics to ask the organization's members. Not surprisingly, if all we can say is, we got a report that your chapter was hazing, our investigation cannot be very comprehensive. We have far more success if we're able to ask about specific people, dates and times, timelines, locations, and activities. Finally, there's a great deal of information available online for parents who want to know more. A list of websites in addition to greek.tulane.edu is on your screen, and I encourage you to consult those. Thank you so much for joining us. If you have questions that were not answered by this tutorial, please feel free to contact us. We look forward to seeing your daughters in a few short weeks.